Hello everyone, welcome back again to our class and I am Sir Said, no? For this time, I'm going to discuss about the theory of um, Karen Horn I, psychoanalytic social theory. Okay, so she is the founder of feminine psychology. It is actually one of the concepts of her theory. And according to her, everyone is a real or potential competitor of everyone else. So let's begin with the biography of Karen Horn I. She is born in Eilbeck near Hamburg. She's the youngest of two children born to an older sea captain and his young wife. Uh, she entered a university of Freiburg. She worked with neurotics. That's why my theory talaga siya about neurosis. Um, she published the, the Technique of Psychoanalytic Therapy in 1917 and she left Germany to become an associate director of Chicago Psychoanalytic Institute. Increasingly abundant psychoanalysis in favor of a more socially oriented theory and founder of her own clinic. So as what you can see talaga class, the ba yung sa theory niya, it is psychoanalytic social theory. So it's a combination between psychoanalysis and social or cultural expectations and influences to human beings. So basic assumptions is social and cultural conditions, especially childhood experiences, are largely responsible for shaping behavior. So it's not only childhood experiences which affects a child's development. Also, there is social and cultural um, influences that influences or that shapes the development of a person. Okay, she believed that um, the nutritive soil of neurosis is basic anxiety that may develop over time. Okay, so again, just to reiterate, may concept talaga siya about neurosis. How can we define neurosis? So this is a state of being irrational. No, uh, We experience anxiety because of this one. Alright, so we have normal anxiety din kasi and we have neurotic anxiety according to Freud. So kapag normal yung anxiety events, no, it's rational but when it is um, when it is not healthy or kapag neurotic anxiety talagang irrational no, yung pagtingin ng person sa world niya. Okay, so ano pa ba? Let's go. She hypothesized that a difficult childhood is primarily responsible for neurotic needs. So experience though, childhood experiences natin when we when we are still young uh, really influences you no know, uh, our growth and our personality, you no, know, and also this needs, this neurotic needs. Sometimes we can develop this over time. Okay, so let's continue. What is basic hostility? One also of the tenets of, of horn eye is basic hostility. This is the fear of a person, no? Na iiwan siya ng mga magulang niya. So people who do not have their needs for love and affection satisfied during childhood develops basic hostility towards their parents. I mean, there is this kind of um, galit, no? Or nagkakaroon siya ng anger towards her parents, no? Pag hindi siya nabigyan ng sapat na pagmamahal at atensyon during bata siya, iniwan siya ng mga magulang or hindi siya inalagaan ng caregiver no or ng kanyang yaya, ganyan, nakaka-develop siya ng uh, basic hostility towards their parents or caregivers. So the final or the first reaction to parental indifference is anger. So take note of that one. It is because of this nakaka-develop ng basic anxiety yung isang bata. So as a consequence, they suffer from basic anxiety. No? Because of this uh, anger, ah, uh, develop siya ng basic anxiety. So ano ba to, sir? Basic anxiety is the result of basic hostility. Pag iniwan siya, experience siya ng parental indifference, nakaka-develop siya nito. And this is the fear of helplessness and abandonment. So natatakot na siya, no? Kasi parang iwan siya at wala siyang nagagawa. Dahil, yun, iniwan na siya, hindi siya nakareceive ng enough love and care. So, makaka-feel siya nito, no? She feels or he feels isolated and helpless in a world conceived as potentially hostile. So, ang may tingin din talaga si Horn Eye na yung mundo talaga natin ngayon, uh, talagang magulo, no? Talagang chaotic, no? Hindi talaga positive din yung impression niya towards the world. 
people combat basic anxiety by adopting one of the three fundamental styles of relating to others. So, isa rin to sa mga um, application and contextualization na pwede natin ma-derive sa theory ni uh, Horn ay yung mata, no? moving away people, moving towards people, and moving against people. So, for normal individuals, they could shift from one style to another, but for neurotic individuals, they only rely to one. So, kapag nakaka-feel ka ng anxiety, you just rely to only one in all situations. Okay? Kapag nakaka-feel ka ng basic anxiety in any situations, you move away, you move away, you move towards, or you move against. But for a normal individual who feels basic anxiety, she or he just uh, can shift no, from one style to another. Mm -hmm. Normal individuals may use any of these modes of relating to people, while neurotic individuals are compelled to rigidly rely into one. Like what I've mentioned kanina. Okay, so if Freud has defense mechanism uh, and Adler has safeguarding tendencies, no? so uh, si Horn ay naman, meron siyang protective devices. So ito yung equivalent niya. So, these are the defenses against basic anxiety to real or imagined hostility. So, na-recognize -re -re din talaga ni Horn Eye na hindi lahat ng nafe-feel na anxiety is normal. Sometimes, it's not really true or fantasy-fantasy lang. So, ito yung mga uh, protective devices. Uh, power, prestige, and possession. So, um... We have this protective device, no, to either dominate, no. Uh, this is referring to our power, prestige, naman, no. This is referring to uh, protecting against humiliation and possession to buffer against destitution and poverty. So these are that some defense mechanisms, no, that a person might use or incorporate in his life. Affection, naman is uh, when people try to purchase love with self effacing compliance or material goods or sexual favor. So, ito yung tinatry natin i-please no? yung ibang person para hindi na tayo makafeel ng basic anxiety. Okay? Next is we have withdrawal. Withdrawal is developing an independence from others or by becoming emotionally detached from them. So, in withdrawal, ginagawa ng isang person dito is... Um, himihiwalay siya or dumidetach siya sa isang person or sa isang grupo or kung ano man para hindi na siya makafeel ng anxiety. Okay? Next is submissiveness. Ito naman is yung sinasubmit or binibigay ng isang person to yung, yung mga sarili nila to people or institution. So in submission, pwede rin ito sa mga organization, ganyan. So you will, you will volunteer or you will be part of this group or perhaps you will submit to other people no na uh, for example um you submit yourself to your husband na gusto niyang makipagtalik sa iyo pero ayaw mo pero para hindi ka makafeel or ng anxiety so bibigay mo lang na lang yung yung sarili mo ganun yun yung mga example mo no, ng submissiveness and uh, uh, sa kanya din ng galing yung compulsive drives so kapag sinabi natin compulsion ito yung uh merong ano yung paulit-ulit no ulit ulit so neurotic people have the same problem affecting normal people except that they experience it on a greater degree so ayun uh, meron talaga tayong compulsive drives so, even you're a normal person you don't have neurotic tendencies but you experience it no in a manageable level but for neurotic people they have the same problem pero mas greater lang yung degree so, they could use, for normal people, a variety of defense maneuvers in a useful way while neurotic people compulsively, compulsively repeat the same strategy in an unproductive manner. So, paulit-ulit lang. Pero yung normal people, so, paiba-iba, no? may way siya of analyzing what compulsive drive or kung ano yung defense maneuver na pwede niyang gamitin but for those na neuro neurotic considered to be neurotic individuals so they just use only one style or trend or maneuver to combat anxiety, basic anxiety so the, we have here again the three fundamental styles of relating to others na mentioned ko to kanina 
So, moving towards people is pag normal ka or nor, pag normal individual, um, it's more of being friendly, loving, and person, having that um, caring personality. But when you are moving towards people and you have neurotic tendencies, then you are more most likely compliant personality towards the point na parang hindi mo na nabibigyan ng sapat na uh, consideration yung self mo, parang comply ka lang ng comply, kahit na parang inaabuso ka na, ganyan, so hindi rin siya healthy. So, ayun, yun yung difference ng dalawa, no? normal defenses sa neurotic defenses. Pag moving against naman, ito naman yung survivor in a competitive society. So, yun yung sa normal defense, but for a neurotic defense, no, it's just having aggressive personality. So, makikita natin dito yung view ng person. Pag moving against people ka, it's most likely parang aggressive ka, no, you're just showing that towards other people na yung tendencies mo, no, to destroy or to, uh, you know, to show this or in exhibit this kind of behavior. It's hindi siya parang positive yung impression towards yourself. But for moving away person na, from people, no, makikita natin dito na kapag healthy ka or normal defense ka, uh, may autonomy ka, no, you have that serene personality to be independent. And kapag neurotic naman yung person, in moving away from people, you are detaching yourself. Or you have that detached personality. So hindi rin siya maganda na totally mag-detach ka no? sa mga institutions or sa ibang tao, ganyan. So, makikita natin dito yung mga impressions. No? Paano tignan ng isang person yung sarili niya and paano niya ito hinahandle yung uh, pag-relate sa ibang tao, sa mga ibang bagay or sa mga ibang grupo. Sana meron kayong nakuha dito. At ngayon naman, dadako tayo sa 10 neurotic needs ni Karen Hornay. So, kanya din galing yung 10 neurotic needs. Ito yung nade-develop minsan sa atin. Okay, we have... Uh, first is the neurotic needs in moving towards people. We have uh, need for affection and approval, need for a powerful partner, need to restrict one's life, narrow borders, and need for power. Okay, so may mga classification and categories lang siya. So, ang ginawa ko lang dito is kinategorize ko lang siya according sa classification niya. For moving away, I mean for against, moving against. Uh, we have here also four. This is to exploit others for social recognition and prestige, need for personal admiration, and need for ambition. So again, these are all neur neurotic needs, no? So most likely need to healthy. And for moving away, these are, we have two here, need for self-sufficiency and independence and need for perfection and prestige. So, actually, these are parts of the compulsive drives that we developed. And um, most likely, uh, meron tong, ano, ito yung mga pamamaraan natin para hindi na tayo makafeel ng basic anxiety. So, again, it's a neurotic need. It's not a normal need or kung ano man. Summary of four nice neurotic trends. So, yung na-present ko kanina, diba? may tatlo tayong trends, moving toward, moving against, and moving away from people. Again, when I say normal individual, they can shift from one trend to another. But when a person is a neurotic individual, isa lang yung ginagawa niya. Pag against, against lang siya sa lahat. Pag toward, toward lang siya sa lahat. Kapag away, away lang siya sa lahat. Diba? So, hindi siya nakapag-shift. Okay. So, sa kanya din galing yung concept ng intrapsychic conflicts. So, ito yung nag-originate from interpersonal experiences natin. It can become part of a person's belief of system of themselves. They developed a life of their own, an existence separate from the interpersonal conflicts that gave them life. So, yeah. So, most likely this is phenomenological. It's a subjective impression of their existence, of their life, that may sometimes give interpersonal conflicts, no? Na nakaka-apekto na sa pakikitungo sa ibang person, sa ibang tao, sa ibang grupo, ganyan. Nakaka-develop tayo ng mga ganito minsan, no? So, yeah. So, that is intrapsychic conflicts. Inner conflicts that we developed over time. 
So we have here three categories or three aspects of intrapsychic conflicts. We have first idealized self-image. This is a feeling of being alienated from themselves. People need desperately to acquire a stable sense of identity. Minsan nakaka-feel tayo na para bang kailangan natin na maging ganito or maging ganitong person pero hindi natin hindi hindi, hindi tayo ganoon no it's like painting a godlike picture of themselves hence my delusion of grandeur okay so ayun next is we have neurotic search for glory so ito naman yung another aspect of inner psychic conflict this is a comprehensive drive towards actualizing the ideal self so may tendency din tayo minsan na yung we're trying to uh, become the person or building a fantasy world. Ay, hindi pala. So that is for neurotic uh, claims. I'm sorry. Uh, but for neurotic search for glory, it is a comprehensive drive towards actualizing the ideal self. Uh, it's like the tyranny of the should. I should be like this. I should be like this. I should be like that. I should be like... Alam niyo yun, maganda, I should be like a model, I should be like perfect, I should be like an artista, ganyan. So, it's always that neurotics need, no, to become like this, no, to have praises from other people. And there are three elements for this one, uh, the need for, for perfection, neurotic ambition, and drive towards a vindictive triumph. So, yung elements nito, just remember that, no. So, next is we have neurotic claims. This is uh, searching for glory. Neurotic builds a fantasy world that is kailangan ganito, no? Yung mundo ko. And a world that is out of sync with the real world. Sometimes, umaabot tayo sa point na hindi na rational or realistic yung tingin natin sa so, dapat sa magiging life natin, no? We are claiming, no? Na ganito dapat. Kailangan ganito. Kailangan maging sikat ako, no? Yan yan. So, Hindi rin healthy yun. Kailangan minsan masampal din tayo ng katotohan. <laughs> okay, they proclaim that they are special and therefore entitled to be treated in accordance with their idealized self-image. So, dito rin pumapasok si idealized self-image. So, self-image siya, ibig sabihin, sa sa'yo lang, it's your own image of yourself. It does not really what the world see or view you. No? So... Neurotic pride naman is ito yung a false pride. Ibig sabihin, hindi yan totoo. Based not on a realistic view of the true self but on a spurious image of the idealized self. So, hindi yung totoo na tingin mo ang sa self mo. So, nakaka-develop ka nito. Self-hatred naman is kapag hindi mo na-achieve no, yung gusto mo maging. Ito yung irrational and powerful tendency to despise one's real self. Pag hindi na nag-match yung totoong ikaw, sa gusto mo maging, no? self-hatred can be developed. When neurotic realize that their real self does not match to their inshatable demands of their idealized self, then they will begin to hate and despite themselves. So, important yung self-acceptance, no? As early siguro as now, being a growing adult, no? It's good that we already know kung sino talaga tayo. It's okay na mga araw tayo, magkaroon tayo ng mga dreams or impressions or fictions about kung sino talaga tayo. But sometimes it's good na alam natin kung anong limitations natin. Alam natin kung sino tayo ngayon. Kilala, kilala natin kung sino tayo. Six ways on how to express self-hatred. As first is relentless demands of the self. Parang kailangan ganito ako, kailangan mayaman, kailangan maging ganito ako, maging singkat, kailangan... Uh, isa akong, you know, influencer. Kailangan marami akong likes sa Facebook. Kailangan marami akong followers sa Twitter, sa, in sa Instagram. Ganyan, ganyan. So, next is merciless self-accusation. So, ito yung palagi mong sinisisi na lang yung, yung sarili mo. Nag-fail ka, ganyan. Kasalanan mo, kasalanan ko, kasalanan, ganyan, ganyan. So, you always blame it to yourself. You accuse yourself of so many things. You're not being kind to yourself. Next is self-contempt. You try to ridicule, doubt yourself often. No? So, always mo na lang na yung mga hindi nangyayaring maganda sa'yo. Always mo na lang biniblame yung sarili mo. Self-frustration. So, nakaka-develop tayo nito. Parang dahil hindi natin na-reach yung idealized self-image natin. That's why we are feeling frustrated in ourselves, a self-torment and self-torture. So, yun, pinapahirapan natin yung self natin. Pinaparusahan natin yung self natin. Dito na rin papasok yung uh, yun. Minsan, uh, inaabuso natin yung mga ating mga katawan. 
no? We engage sometimes to sex, towards drugs, ganyan. So it's form of expressing self-hatred. And also self-destructive actions and impulses. So yun pala yun. So yun, nakaka-form tayo ng mga ganong mga addictive behaviors, no? Uh, because we hate ourselves. Alright, so let's proceed to feminine psychology. Like what I mentioned, she's the forerunner of feminine psychology, C. Pornay. So this focuses on the psychological differences between men and women are not the result of anatomy but rather to culture and social expectations. So yung disparity ng men and women... No, hindi yun dahil may penis yung lalaki at, at may vagina yung babae but rather because may mga na-develop ng mga social and cultural expectations sa kanila kaya nagkakaroon ng bias no? so pinaglalaban ni Horn ay yung pagkakapantay-pantay ng dalawang sex Horn ay insisted the basic anxiety is at the core of men's need to subjugate women and women's wish to humiliate men so makikita natin naman na hindi lang uh, bias si Horn Eye sa mga babae. So, meron din siyang tingin ng mga babae sa mga women no na hindi rin angkop dapat or meron din meron din siyang bias towards men. And likewise, men has bias towards women. So, yun ha yung concept ng feminine psychology. So, again, it's a result of the cultural and social expectations towards this success. Applications of psychoanalytic social theory. So, nakafocus siya on the development of self-realization through self-analysis. So, sa theory or sa uh, psychoanalytic theory na to or sa psycho, ano yan? Sa psychotherapy, no? Bas nafocus yung pagkaka, yung pag-accept ng kung sino ka talaga no yung self realization of your true self yun yung na focus sa psychotherapy ni Hornay also utilizes some techniques of Freud so again psychodynamic din naman si Hornay so nag-add lang siya ng social and cultural expectations It's successful when patients can assume responsibility for their psychological development yeah so kapag um kapag na-recognize ng person yung mga faults or yung mga um, irrational beliefs niya about himself or herself, then yeah, magkakaroon na ng progress. Next is, the goal of Hernian therapy is to help patients gradually grow in the direction of self-realization. This is when to realize that this is you and hindi yung mga false pride, hindi yung mga idealized self-image, no? hindi yun. So, na-erase yun or nakokorek natin yun. Next is to give up their idealized self-image, yeah, and to relinquish their neurotic search for glory and to change self-hatred to self-acceptance. Medyo maganda rin yung theory niya. It's mostly accepting who you are than hating you for being not like this person na gusto mo maging or persuaded ka maging. Focus also on love, mastery, and freedom. Okay, 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 okay. I think that is everything that I have to discuss. And thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful day and see you soon. Goodbye for now.